Irin Hugas is a senior learning experience designer for the Western Government University. She has 26 years of experience working in the education and uh, she is also having a master degree from organizational management and doctoral candidates at Northern Arizona University. Uh, now I'd like our first presenter, Ms. Mary and even Erin uh, Hugas to start with a presentation. Wonderful, let me go ahead and get my screen shared here. Uh, wonderful. Thank you so much for attending our session today on assessing outcomes of significance with performance assessments. Uh, Mary and I are coming to you. Let's see if I can get this to advance here. Uh, Mary and I are coming to you from the United States, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, specifically, where it's still very early in the morning. Um, Mary, if you could go ahead and introduce yourself. Sure. I'm Mary Katchov. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm a senior assessment developer at Western Governors University, and I uh, work with our internal faculty and external industry experts on developing assessments for our courses, which are competency-based. And I'm Erin Hugis. I am a senior learning experience designer also at Western Governors University. I also work with a faculty and industry subject matter experts in the design of the course experiences. And Mary and I have been working together since uh, 2014. We worked together at another large online university. And together we develop essential outcomes to establish and establish conditions for students to be able to achieve and demonstrate them. So if, for those who aren't familiar with Western Governors University, WGU is a, the largest online university in the United States, serving primarily working adult students. Uh, colleges include uh, business, health, education, and information technology. And all courses and programs are de developed using outcomes-based and competency-based education principles. And our uh, mission is to change the lives for the better by creating opportunities uh, for our learners. So today we'll talk about the, uh, we'll be describing the development of performance assessments with culminating outcomes of significance. And also explain the role that OBE designed assessments have beyond the course experience. And so I'll hand it over to Mary, who will walk us through an example. Yes, um, today when we really when we want to talk about authentic assessment, uh, we really wanted to focus on OBE's power principle number one um, from Spady from his book Outcome Based Education, um, because this is really central to developing authentic assessments. Is that the clarity of focus on this culminating exit outcomes of significance? Um, what's really important about this is that um, Spady distinguishes the different outcomes. We, we have, yes, we want to design our, our courses and assessments around learning outcomes, but we also want to make sure that they are outcome, there are outcomes of significance, meaning that when the student leaves school, they're going to use that learning for um, an authentic um, a purpose that will serve them in their life outside of school. And so it really may, when we when we focus on this power principle number one, we are really having to explain why why do students have to learn what we want them to learn, um, and and focusing on that outcome of significance helps us to develop an authentic assessment. And so the example I want to share with you is we we needed to build a course. Um, I, I I was working with a whole team of people who aren't on this call today but they, um, we needed to build a course for a teacher preparation program for our students in the state of Washington. Um, there's a law in the state of Washington that requires um, teacher preparation programs to integrate, um, to have a history course in their program for the Pacific Northwest or for the state of Washington that integrates Native American curriculum that is approved by the Office of um, the Superintendent of Public Instruction. And so we were building this Pacific Northwest history course. And the curriculum that needs to be implemented is endorsed by all 29 federally recognized tribes. 
Um, and the intent of that curriculum and the use of that curriculum is um, to improve the understanding of students and educators about the contribution of Indian nations to the state of Washington, um, as well as the current relationships between tribal and state governments. Uh, and, and really the intent too is for the educators to, to know who's in their classrooms to be able to better serve those communities, um, those community students and their families. So when we were uh, trying to figure out how are we going to assess learning in this course, uh, we face some challenges because often when you think about how learning or history is assessed, sometimes it might be a multiple choice test where students are expected to recall facts that we want them to know. We want them to know certain dates or historical events or um, important figures in history. We might ask them to write a paper about cause and effect, what caused um, a certain event in history, what was the effect of a certain event in history. Uh, but the challenge we face on this course is, as you, as you saw, there were 29 federally recognized tribes from that area that um, all have their own histories, their own um, culture, and how do we pick which facts we want the students to know, which what was most important. It was, it was a problem. Um, and we wanted the, the assessment to be authentic. So we decided to do a performance assessment um, and we had to go back to the wording of the law. Why is it that we want this course in the first place? What is it that the students are supposed to take with them once they're finished um, beyond just um, learning about history? What is it that they're supposed to now do with that knowledge when they leave the classroom? And so we decided that it would be most authentic to allow the students to pick a tribe that was um, that would potentially be in their teaching area that where where um, if you look at the map our students wherever they live and wherever they're planning to apply for a job um, a tribe from that location would be more relevant to them and so we allow them to pick um, and do a community research project of a local tribe and um, and the culminating exit outcome of significance would be that they would be ready um, or prepared to establish a relationship with that tribe and have an understanding of the students coming from that background into their classrooms and to be able to, um, to better teach about it too. And we, we provided our students in, in this assessment uh, with a link to the Washington Office of the Superintendent of Public Instruction because um, we, what we wanted to help the students find very authentic sources of information, reliable sources of information on their tribes. And every tribe has a website and the uh, superintendent of public instruction provides that, uh, those links for our students or for, for the public. And Erin will show you an example um, why, why this would be a good source of information for a project like this is that, um, they provide a lot of information about their culture and their history right there on the website. Uh, but they also have departments where the students are encouraged to, they're not required to, but they're encouraged to reach out and, and actually speak to somebody to, to get that information. Uh, you know, perhaps the education department would, would be happy to talk to a student and give some information. So this, uh, but even if the students don't actually speak to anybody, they know where to go if they ever wanted to. And so having this knowledge empowers them to in the future as a teacher in a community, form a relationship with that tribe and gather authentic information from them. Awesome, and since this course was developed, we've had students come through the program and, and complete this assessment. And we've had an, a wonderful opportunity to hear about um, how students are interacting and what they are finding is through this experience in this course and through this assessment. And so here are just a few highlights where one of the students is explaining how they really love the assessment and how often do we hear students say they really love an assessment. Um, they were able to connect with their community and they're really excited about the learning and opportunity there. 
Another uh, student shared that they did make that connection with the tribal leader and a, and a historian to learn more about a local tribe to them and learning about their history and making that connection with their community. They were very excited about that. So, so uh, the value of OBE assessments focusing on significant outcomes can have an effect beyond that course experience. And what I like to, to describe that as, it's like a ripple effect. So when Mary and I worked together at our previous institution, we had the opportunity to design, develop, and pilot a, a course for teachers, practicing teachers on education policy. And one of our a pilot participants actually went on to present her policy to her school board. And it was about professional development for faculty. And so she, her, through this assessment, can affect change for teachers in her district. Um, currently, I am designing a program for undergraduate business students in business innovation. And throughout the major, students have the opportunity to um, define, prototype, and then pitch a solution to an actual business problem. So not only are they exiting with uh, a solution that can be can affect change in their business context, they're also exiting with artifacts that demonstrate their ability to innovate that they can show to their current or, or future employers. And according to employers, um, significant outcomes that higher education should focus on is the development of those 21st century skills, those durable, soft, power human skills that translate across both academic and employment contexts. And what I found in my research is that authentic performance assessments help to develop those skills, especially in online learning. And so now we'd like to open it up for any questions from the group. Do we have any questions? No, ma'am, there are no questions yet. Yeah. Can continue. From speakers, do anyone want to ask something? I request speakers if they want to. Okay, so, so I do, thank, I do have a references slide just for references if anyone wants to follow up on any of the research that we included in this presentation. So I thank Ms. Mary and Yaron Hugus for the wonderful presentation and the research which they have done. It's actually very informative for the research and all. And now I next uh, call upon Mr. Randy. Mr. Randy, Mr. Randy Hello. is actually yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, I'm just, yes, I'm just uh -huh. giving a bio of you, just for a minute. Mr. Randy is actually the head teacher of SGNH Philippines. He has done his master's in education with the specialization of general science from Philippine Normal University, and he's currently working as head teacher too at San Gio National High School, Philippines. So, Mr. Randy, you can take up the presentation, 15 minutes, and then we have a question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, is my presentation already uh, projected in, in your um, screen right now? Yes. Hello, sir. sir. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, the yes, screen sir? should be uh, full, sir. Full screen it should be. So yes, I request uh, yes, you sir. to go into the slideshow and then start from the beginning. Yeah. Ah, uh, how's that one? Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. So it's a great opportunity for me, um, to share to you our project, which is um basically focused on the digitizing rural schools innovatively using offline version of e-learning management system. 
So I am the school head of San Jose National High School. Just to give you a short background, I am a public secondary school head of, of a, in the Department of Education, which is basically located in Caraga region, Bislig City in particular. So I am also the team leader of our school continuous improvement project, which is the project drives. So as mentioned earlier, I was I graduated from, um, from the, uh, the Bachelor of Secondary Education, major in general science at the Philippine Norman University. Took up also my master's on the general science at the same university. And recently I am enrolled in a master's in educational leadership and management in the same university. So to give you a short background of our school situation, so our school, San Jose National High School in particular, is located more or less 17 um, kilometers from the city proper. So it is situ situated in a hilltop. So basically, it's really a rural school. And it is, although it is accessible by, uh, any, by means of, of um, transportation, but our school is, don't have any internet connectivity. So basically, it's... Um, it can be classified into from no to low connection. So with that, with that, situ with that particular um, situation, so um, we recognize that we need to shift from traditional to um, digital learning um, delivery brought about by the COVID-19. So San Jose National High School, which is situated in a rural community, initially um, implemented um, Initially implemented a digital modular dis, um, distance learning and a printed modular distance learning, which is by providing a digital device out from the school and other um, local resources. So we provided initially with um, storage devices for our learners in which um, the SLM and, or the self-learning modules and the learning activity sheets are already provided are stored on the, on the flash drives. So this was initiated by our school due to low to no internet connection. And to emerge differently from the usual process, the school initiated a, a continuous improvement project known as the Project Drives, which is an offline learning management system, which is a complete metamorphosis from its predecessor process of digital learning. So anchored to our one of our key areas in the Philippine education, key areas in the future of the Philippine education, which is exploring technologies for the remote learning. The school, we set up a community-based um, community LAN server and the wireless connectivity for our offline, for, for offline access of the learning management system. This OLMS or offline learning management system um, using learner's account where they can freely access the content, interact with the teacher and submit the learning output provided feedback and to access the learning outcomes. So basically, our continuous improvement project is anchored to a CI methodology, which is based on the Deep Ed, Deep Ed in partnership with the BEST or the Basic Education Sector Transformation of the USA uh, of the Australian Aid, a CI methodology. We basically uses um, three steps: assess, analyze, and act. And each of this particular framework or methodology have um, composed of 10 steps. So the MCI methodology is anchored to the total quality management as a, frame, as a framework to quality education and a systems thinking, which of course focus on the importance of relationship of interconnection of the different process, which the schools have. So to give you an overview of how we, how we um, conducted, these are the anchored to the process. We started with the assess, and then we conducted analysis, and then we act based on the based on the implementation that we have. So to give you some, um, to give you more highlights of our present of the presentation, allow me to share to you this particular video. Hello, Mr. Rally. Hello? 
Hello, Mr. Andy, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Your Hello? video is not audible, Mr. Andy. Like uh, video, uh, your oh. audio, audio is not working. I think so. We are not able to hear what is being said. Ah, okay, uh, for a while, I'll be I'll be using the the the, the um, I will try to use the um original video okay. for this presentation. Can I? Can you give me a few less two minutes to okay, locate right. my file? Thank you so much. So my apology. So again, let me share to you my screen. Is the um is the video not um presented? Hello, ma'am. Yes, sir. You can start. Okay, can I? I will now um play the video. So again, my apology. So allow me to present to you the video of our um school project the project price. Hey, Mr. Randy, again, I think so we cannot hear the audio. We can continue with it because actually we are running out of time. 15 minutes is actually the limit. So I think so. Uh, if you can play without uh, voice also, I mean without audio also, I think so it won't be a problem because you are playing it twice and still the audio is not, like we cannot hear the audio. Hello, ma'am. Can you hear the audio? No, we cannot hear the audio. I would like to um, start over the video. Please give me a, 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 um, a feedback if, if it's audible already. How about that, ma'am? Yes, yes. Now it's audible, sir. You can. Is it already audible? Yes, yes. It's audible, sir. Audible, right. Project trials are never done by one person. They are done by a team of people. 
The team I am denoted to starts with certain difficulty. Team leader, that leads, monitors, supervises the team members to achieve the goals that contribute to the growth of project drugs, which is assisted by our assistant team leader, Ms. Jen Mercy Abilido, Special Science Teacher 1. Ms. Sir Murphy Salinas, Teacher 2 as a documentary. Overseeing the switch from paper to electronic keeping is a vital role of Mrs. Bria Joy Armandigo and Teacher 1 as a reference keeper. Lastly, Mrs. Ivelyn Pell Godonky Bird, Teacher 2, and Ms. Nekajin Ava Mapalan, Special Science Teacher 1, sets the provision of technical support to our team in terms of database administration and the familiarity of IT processes. We are the IT specialists. That completes the project drives tandem. In this transition period of changing to new phase of teaching and learning, traditional educational approaches are being replaced by digital learning. With classrooms rapidly changing and remote learning is clear because of the pandemic. It is now preferable to set about conventional, traditional teaching and learning methods and think of emerging teaching and learning approaches based on digital learning tools and technology. This prompt the school community, led by school hackers, rapid people hunting, and stakeholders to establish a method allowing students to borrow the school's available digital learning device and supply storage, resulting in the successful pioneering of a digital version of modular distance learning. <laughs> During the conduct of the remote enrollment using the learner survey and enrollment form, modular distance learning modality was pre-worked by 320 blog students, or 95%. 257 of them choose printed modules, while 60 students, or 20%, chooses digital modules. Anchored in the school learning continuity plan and contextualized implementation framework, San Jose National High School took the initial steps to migrate 58 junior high school and senior high school students to digital learners using digital gadgets, where 45 of them borrowed the school tablet PCs through a memorandum of understanding. Able to access the digital learning resources, the school provided storage devices to our recipient learners. However, the process of using these storage devices encountered some problems. Wherein 64% of the users find it difficult to access. A little progress each day adds up to big results. Upon setting up and building the programming aspect of offline learning management system, San Jose National High School Project Drive team capacitated the teachers with necessary skills on system management, such as on how to access the system, creating an account, uploading digital resources to the system, and communicating to the learners through a school lab session last December 2020. To take another step, last January 8 to 15, 2021, PC tablet recipients through parents and other stakeholders agreed by signing the Memorandum of Understanding to be committed and support the project. And last January 20 to 21, 2021, the installation of LAN network via point to point accessibility happened with the construction of tower antenna and community Wi Fi hotspot completes a community based local server for learners to freely access digital content. Incredible things happen when one helps one another to achieve certain goals. 
we will find ourselves working faster and innovating better. Thus, on January 22, 2021, community and stakeholders worked together to support the project. And the initial digital learning implementation via Project Tribe happens with the presence of Schools Division Superintendent Su, Division LR Team, and Public Schools District Supervisor Tulang. To reach perfection, Project Tribe implementation system is enhanced to improve its service it could provide to the community. And in making the project viable, on March 2021, pilot testing and simulation was conducted as a joint project of the school and the stakeholders within the community. Complementing project drives can be likened to building a house. First, you have an inspiration. Hello. Um, I'm now shifting my audio. Am I? Am I already? It's so audible, that's. Sir, actually, we are running out of time, so I request you to please wind it up. Okay. So to to wind it up, um, our we can we provided the we provided the uh, a manual, no, a, um, a manual for operate for operation. So. We have um, the so-called the manual of operation. Okay, allow me again to share to you my screen. So, to make the um, project very viable and um, for our for others to replicate. So we provided a, 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 a what we call that uh, manual of operation. But in the manual of operation, um, students could be, be could be guided on how to manipulate the system um, uh, in offline, in offline, and of course, um, guide for all the teachers where they could be able to provide a feedback at the same time, access and uh, access all the um, the submitted outputs of our learners. With this, all the assessments can be gathered easily and including um, the submission of our students. So that's all for my presentation and thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Varni. You have done a wonderful job. Congratulations to you and your team. And next we have Dr. Jocelyn Dimala. Is she available? Ms. Jocelyn Dimala, yeah. Uh, welcome you, ma'am. Ms. Jocelyn Damala is actually a PhD holder, that is, she's a, she has done her doctorate from Education Management Candidate with Administrative and Teaching Experience from primary to tertiary level, both in public, government and private schools. She's an active member from Philosophy of Robotic Academy and Robotic Society. She has been a honorary of Education 2.0 International Outstanding Leadership Award. So I request Ms. Jocelyn Damala to start with the session. Ma'am, you're not audible, ma'am. Ma'am, you're not able to hear you. Hello? Hello, Ms. Dr. Jocelyn? Can you hear me? Dr. Jocelyn? Yeah, ma'am, but your voice is not audible. We cannot hear you. Okay, one moment. Hello? Can you hear me? Uh, now, now it's audible. Thank you so oh, much. Okay, so sorry about that. Yeah, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. So hi, everyone. It's nice to see you all here. I hope we can meet in person, but yeah, this is the advantage of technology. We can see and communicate with each other despite the distance. So this is Jocelyn, and I'm school principal of Unity Christian Colleges in the Philippines. I would like to share with you a little bit about some technology upgrades and the search of the pandemic under transformational technology and smart schools learning environment. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected the world's economies and created the largest disruption in the education industry. 
the effect has been really radical as it has permanently altered the education landscape. However, the education sector found means to support remote teaching and learning through the technological revolution. Digital transformation in education also has been incremental in bringing about these tools, and it has been realized during the outbreak. Countries started their progression towards a more globalized education to ensure the achievement of our goal of shaping our students into the leaders of tomorrow. So now, what is innovation in education? Uh, sorry to interrupt you, ma'am. Actually, we have to offer a full screen. So if oh. you can press uh, F5, oh, yes, complete screen has to that. be covered. Uh, it's PPT, right? I think so. If you can click upon F5, uh, it will help you in providing a full screen. Oh, yeah. Oh, let's, let me just do it. This is, this is just a presentation on my Canva, just bear with me. I, I did not see that. <laughs> so sorry about that. Can you see it right. now? Yes, yes. Thank you so much, ma'am. Right. Okay, let me see. Oh. Is, is it? it You're not able back. to change the slide, is it? Yeah, I think. I was able to do that earlier, so sorry. Just now you have opted for a full screen, right? Yeah. Is yeah, that okay, they, okay? Can you see it? Yeah, but it's actually not a full screen. We have been instructed for full screen. Oh, how about this one? Oh, yeah. Okay, but you're not able to do it, is it? Full screen, you cannot? Oh. Just it's actually little... getting zoom in, zoom out. Yeah, uh, that is what I, I'm showing here. You have, well. you have yeah, oh. yeah, you have clicked on present, right? Something you have yeah. clicked, right? There. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Can you see it? <laughs> yes, yes, this is perfect. Thank you so okay. much. Okay, yeah, this is technology. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. it happens. Okay. Oh, so um, yeah, what I'm I'm telling about earlier is that about digital transformation. So. Now, what is really digital um, innovation in education? Innovation in education means like, you know, solving the real problem in a new simple way to promote equitable learning. And how do educational innovators do that? Uh, we, we already have to really work on to continue with their mission and ensure everyone's right to quality education. So organizations collaborate with partners to, to discover, develop, and integrate promising um, innovations that provide every classroom with endless possibilities. So as you can see here in the screen, uh, there are some transformation to enhance student experience, and that includes providing a broad range of choices for online learning, so we have enabling students to enter through the mobile app or web application. Next is we have using technology to track the progress of students and enforce intervention protocols and enabling online classes like organization faculties. So see how important it is in classrooms and entire institutions. So now we also have the key areas in educational transformation. You can, you can see how schools are now being transformed by technology. So from the use of different teaching techniques and technologies, of course, a lot of different styles and pedagogies, contact less attendance. We have here the registration and admission technologies as well, social distance control system, improved learning management systems or elements, including assessment procedures, a, a lot of integration that we, we can also use, automation, and a lot more. So I just want to share with you a project in the Philippines, and this is called School in a Bag. Okay, so as you can see, this is 
something that is considered an innovative project of, of our um, community or our country. So they help education through technology. What is inside the bag? So you can see there is one laptop. We have an LED, LED TV, a smart pro, a pocket Wi-Fi there. Um, of course, with starter load, we have five tablets, and it's so nice. One solar panel, one hard drive, and a smartphone or digital education content. So a school in a bag is, is actually a portable digital classroom designed to facilitate learning and basic education in remote areas without electricity. So as you can see, it utilizes mobile technology coupled with an innovative 21st century teaching pedagogy. And of course, it includes the K-12 content to enable and facilitate learning. So not only that, we have a lot of projects and collaborations here in the Philippines, like uh, for example, in our school, we have um, communicated and, you know, collaborated with our international friends like in the UK to, to really have sustainability programs in our school for, for our students, not only for the students, but um, as well as our teachers. Okay, so it's really about innovation for education right now. Technology upgrades in the search of the pandemic and, and now we see that the future is brighter. Okay, I think that's it. Let us empower ourselves with a weapon of innovation and technology so we can shield ourselves and our youth with readiness and capability. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Do we have any questions? Any speaker would like to ask? Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. That's what wonderful and incredible. Thank you so much for your thoughts and your research, what you have done. Uh, now, next, I call upon Mr. Marvin, Marvin C. LaFranco. He's actually an associate professor in University of Metadonia Panabo College, Philippines, and a former discipline head in social sciences and self-instruction module quality checker. So now I request Mr. Marvin to continue with the session. Hello, can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, yes, it's and very sir. audible, sir. Thank, Thank you for you. that wonderful introduction, ma'am Astra. Thank Good so day, much. everyone. I will be presenting the study entitled Silver Lining of COVID-19 Crisis Through the Lens of Educators. I'm Marvin Silofranco, a licensed professional teacher in a Master of Arts in Education, teaching social studies, an associate professor, and currently the senior high school principal of UM Panabu College. Allow me to start the presentation. The online teaching is one of the modality in the new normal setup of education. It has been said that it cannot be successful without the, the involvement of teachers, as they are the frontline workers of any educational institutions. The recent studies have addressed the barriers of online teaching in various developed countries, as such as Germany, Luxembourg, Japan, Finland, but very limited studies have been conducted on developing countries, according to Stofregen et al. 2016, Sutherland 2014, and Shea 2007. In fact, online teaching is a relatively concept in uh, or a new me, concept. Mr. Marvin, yes? uh, sorry to interrupt you. Can you just yes, maximize it a little? Okay, ma'am. Noted. New concept you in developing. To, you just have to press maximization button be beside the cross close button. I'm I sorry. Think Beside the cross, close button, we have maximized, right? If you can click upon that, I can. Sir, on the top. Sir, on the top right. Sir, on the top right. How about yes, that? Thank you so much. Right. Sir. The COVID-19 pandemic has made it mandatory for the teachers of developing countries to use online platforms for teaching and assessment to continue the teaching learning process. As a result, the teachers need to adopt and embrace the technology for the successful execution of online learning modality. Moreover, Kaup et al. 2020 stated challenges related to technology 
training, and student engagement in sustaining academics during the COVID-19 pandemic. Teachers are not having sufficient infrastructure such as configured laptops, internet, and microphones to efficiently impart education. Many teachers face connectivity issues, system failure, bandwidth issues, while conducting online sessions. Because of the lack of technical assistance, they are unable to resolve problems. The higher education, educational insti education institutions instructed their, their teachers to conduct the classes from their homes without clear instructions. They expected old age teachers who are not technically sound to do online teaching according to Sharma 2020. Teachers also found it difficult to manage the students in remote teaching. Many times, students deliberately create indiscipline by playing music, making noise, post posting bad comments through fake users, eating and playing games in different windows, according to Punit 2020. Teaching in the home environment setting was reported as exhausting and demotivating experience by the teachers. With that, the researchers was urged to conduct the study amidst the pandemic due to the absence of evidence or related study being conducted in the Davao region. Specifically, the study aimed to unveil the encounters of educators from traditional way of teaching to online learning during the COVID-19 crisis through revealing their adversities, survival mechanisms, and takeaway. Furthermore, it provides an empirical evidence that shed light the silver lining of COVID-19 through the lens of educators. This study is significant to the following. Commission on Higher Education, or the CHED, this government agency would benefit from the study by making it as a baseline in understanding the situation and challenges of the college teachers. Educators, it would serve as benchmark for teachers in strengthening the teaching pedagogies to reach out the students in this challenging time. And for the future researchers, the result of this study would be another milestone to extend the horizon of the educational institutions by bridging the gap in responding to the needs of teachers in the midst of global pandemic. This study is anchored to the social constructivism theory of Lev Vygotsky in 1978. This theory focuses to describe and explain teaching and learning as complex, interactive social phenomena between teachers and students. Vygotsky posited that learning is problem solving and that social construction of solution to problem is the basis of the learning process. Thus, for the teachers to construct knowledge, the utilization of the online platform was maximized to have interaction with the students in a, new, in a virtual place. This is an alternative way among teachers in the higher educational institutions to continue the teaching learning process amidst the COVID-19 pandemic or crisis. This study employ, employed a phenomenological qualitative research design with six for in-depth interview and six for focus group discussion, a total of 12 educators, inclusion criteria at least five years in teaching field involved in preparing modules, utilizing platforms in teaching learning process, and handling at least nine units in tertiary level. It uses uh, or it used semi-structured interview guide questionnaire. There, are, there were four higher education institutions in Davao del Norte, Philippines, and they are selected through snowball technique. A triangulation method of analysis is being employed, strictly followed the research ethics and health safety protocol set by IATF since the study was conducted amidst the pandemic. And here are the, re the results of the study. The first table is the emerging themes of the adversities during the COVID-19 crisis through the lens of educators. The first um, emerging theme is the problem in virtual management. The term problem in virtual management is used in this study to describe the adversities in handling the classes in the new normal educational setting due to paradigm shift from traditional to online or blended learning modality in this unprecedented time. They, they often challenges are mentioned by participants way where they struggled in variety of students concern, insufficiency trainings in online modality and difficulty of making modules. And these are supported by Yelma's 2017, Richard's 2013, and Becca 2004. And the second one, in the second theme, we have the demanding workloads. So they were instances in a way that they used to do before in the face-to-face -face classes and the way they handled their classes in the new normal setup of education. They actually shared that they were a challenge and urge 
to change the way they handle their respective classes with numerous workloads related. Hence, it was a problem for among the educators because they have to deal with the demands and changes of the new normal educational setting. These are the following adversities under demanding workloads, distribution of learning resources, dealing with various teaching loads, and twisted learning modality. And it was, and it was supported by Morris et al. 2005, Vaughn Holden 2000, Senya 2012, and Grant et al. 2007. And the third theme under the first um, objective is the barriers of the technology. In the current status of the new normal educational setting, the technology, including the internet connection, plays a vital role as new platform of learning, at, or this is considered as the backbone, backbone of online learning. However, due to the limitations of the technologies, the challenges of the college teachers arise. In other words, the problem related to the technology arises that may include technological knowledge deficiency and intermittent Wi-Fi connectivity. And it is, or it was uh, supported by Alam et al. 2004, Sagar 2001, and Cecilia 2005. While the coping or the survival mechanism during the COVID-19 crisis through the lens of educator has generated um, three major themes. First is we have the blending to the current situation. Tackled with the survival mechanism of the educators in facing the difficulty in handling numerous workloads and sudden changes and adjustments within the workplace brought by the COVID-19 pandemic. They blend to the situation by learning to use online uh, platforms, plotting schedules, and embracing the new modality. It is response or it is a response to the identified adversities, specifically the demanding workloads. It is supported by Johnson and Maddox 2003, Hashim Meizada 2006, and Mansfield et al. 2012. And the next one, we have the building link linkages. The, the third one in the table, um, building linkages are es essential to the organization through soliciting for the betterment of team. These are considered to be important for both teachers and students in the higher educational institutions, especially in this time of pandemic. There were several studies shows that communication is a central issue affecting performance. In the new normal, adjustment between personal life and work are the most important elements to be considered. Call an expert and employing alternative way of learning are the manifestation of building linkages. And it was supported by Itchenstein 2002, that now 2011, Bagriken et al. 2015. And the first theme in the table we have there is the enhancement strategy. It deals with the attributes of teachers to cope with the challenges encountered along the implementations of the new modality. In the time of pandemic, the teachers effectively depends on his demonstration of the affective characteristics. In other words, teachers encountered challenges due to the paradigm shift of educational setting in the, in the normal, but despite of it, they were finding, finding ways to cope and overcome it through series of development in the field of teaching profession through implementing consultation, consultation hours, indulging to webinars and trainings, and sharing ideas in the creation of instructional materials. And the last but not the least table is the emerging themes of the takeaway during COVID-19 crisis through the lens of educators. So based from the gathered data, the outstanding personal qualities are being shown among the interviewed educators amidst the COVID pandemic. This is a reflection to their dedication and determination to effectively exercise their teaching profession and continue in the delivery of instructions and learning despite of the challenges encountered. Reflected to their common shared and gained insights and realization in the middle of educational crisis. Under the theme of develop a positive characteristics are flexible and patient, optimistic and passionate and competent. And it was supported by Colley and Martin 2016, Martin et al 2013, Hoffman et al 2016, Peterson et al 2004. For the implication and future directions of the study, unfortunately, some of the remote areas in the Philippines has slower internet connection that resulted the learners and even the teachers cannot access the online related tasks as mentioned by Dr. Jocelyn and Sir uh, Randy. 
a while ago. To address this concern, the educational institution, particularly the Commission on Higher Education or CHED, and DepEd may collaborate with other agencies to urge the government to find ways to improve the internet connectivity in all areas in the Philippines that hinder the adaptation of technology as a platform of learning. There should also a contingency fund for happenings like this that will finance and support the educational system in all means so that the learning of the learners not be compromised. Furthermore, they should craft an educational emergency plan and preparedness if there would happenings like this in the future by initiating a program related to various pedagogies that would help the college teachers to enhance their knowledge, skills, and perspectives in the teaching learning process, regardless of any circumstances that the education sectors might be encountered. The school must provide a series of seminars and trainings for the educators, administration, and students to be more prepared for the future of the educational system in the Philippines through research. In other words, the enhancement of skills and capabilities among educators is important for them to be prepared in all times through crafting an emergency plan and preparedness program in any circumstances that may happen. In addition, the curriculum should be reviewed depending on the needs and status quo of the country. The collaboration of the stakeholders of the academic institutions are highly recommended to intensify the quality education of every or for every Filipino. Educators in this field also need to be more technologically equipped, whether there will be happenings like this in the future. Likewise, the adaptation of the technology through utilizing the online platforms or the learning management system should be strongly implemented as supplementary in teaching the subjects effectively. Of course, it needs training, trainings and programs for the teachers for them to be more prepared and equipped in their chosen career profession in all times. Nevertheless, further researches and studies related to this study can be conducted to give an account that will speak in behalf of the voiceless teachers when it comes to the challenges they are facing in the teaching learning process and, of course, as contribution to the body of knowledge. All teachers from different levels may take part in a wider scope of the study so that researchers can generate more comprehensive study concerning the ups and downs of the teachers. And here are the sample references of the study. And before I end this presentation, I would like to, uh, to, um, to leave no, this statement. By working hand on hand, we can surpass all the adversities that life may offer. Thus, it is the silver lining of COVID-19 crisis through the, the lens of educators. Once again, good day and thank you very much for listening. First of all, it's a great pleasure to be transmitting this presentation for so many countries throughout the world. So I have the pleasure to present my school. I have been working in the state for so many years and then being invited for this event is such a great, great, great uh, privilege. Thank you so much for the organization uh, to be invited. Real. So I have just to present myself. Uh, a, I am a professor. I have been studying throughout the world uh, a, in my own country. So my professional education background as a professor in public and private schools uh, and universities uh, has been taking place for more than 20 years. I'm a bachelor in law and business science in, as well as natural science. I got two specialization courses in genetics, higher education, and English language. So I got my master's degree. Uh, in, I had so many uh, specific studies as in University of Sao Paulo, speech and diasporas, and these courses too, for in the movement of uh, psychoanalysis, as well as in the CSUDH, the United States, California State University, and in the humanities right as a special student. After all, I started being um, involved with um, persecuting, you know, aim to get my doctoral uh, program after getting my master's degree uh, in the university um, here in Curitiba, the Catholic University, in the area of urban planning, uh, governance, and social mass. Right, though, being accepted for everything, so I got this degree and I've kept myself on to the doctoral program uh, in the University of Buenos Aires where I got
the credits for this and I'm expecting to defend my thesis um, uh, very soon. It's in the aim of um, emancipatory movements and uh, I have been studying um, this subject in a very, very long career, uh, participating of conferences throughout the world, as well as I taken part of a core a court course uh, in the Hague Academy of International Law in Netherlands, uh, where I have a great pleasure to be selected among a group of orientation of specialists of the core there too in 2016 in the area of public and private law. Um, so it was fantastic after that. So I studied in Switzerland, in the University of Geneva, um, the rights of kids throughout the world, like uh, the adolescents, and also diplomacy in the University of London. And I also recently uh, took part of a course of um, public policies in the Frank Batten uh, University in the USA in 2021. So, thank you very much for everybody for this. Right, let's move ourselves to the next slide, please. Right. So, uh, I want to introduce the subject by saying that for different reasons, school exclusion can occur for different um, perspectives of analysis, like um, the necessity to clarify the education institutions in regardless uh, of whether the, they are public or private in the Brazilian and transnational historical profile by the influence exerted by systems considered benchmarks in the urban context of Curitiba, south of Brazil, uh, because we have the insertion of many, many immigrants like European background as well as Latin American immigrant movements. So where the broad community participation is very, very demanded, especially considering the proposals of public policies and monitoring social, legal and institutional developments in the invoked uh, process mainly by the governance and environment policies in the attempt to reach better standards of smart schools as the subject of this presentation and environment. So understanding the causes that generate learning deficits in the achievement of knowledge and competences becomes relevant to the extent that the exercise of tolerance becomes imminent in the increasingly complex society lacking dialogue and articulation engaged with the educational process as a mechanism to repress social violence in all classes. So in the same way, two atypical years of the institutional role of the school in the process of educational formation of our students here in this school were followed considering the failure of an approval rates, the greater systemic compliance and a branch of rigor uh, procedures in the classroom system that can be very, very perceived. So the next stage, that is the year of 2021, with the return of the hybrid and face-to-face -face system in 2022. Right, so I want to say that in 2022, our director, uh, Mrs. Jusselini Bach, was invited by the board of the government platform to be the interventor right for the management of this community here and um, Luciana França da Rocha is the one who is uh, working uh, here with her uh, trying to control all the changes and necessary demands that we have been uh, following with her Right, so what we have to say is that we have 1,020 students' uh, applications and 50 groups in the school concerning seven different areas like adolescents, high school, and professional education activities, mainly in the technical course of administrations in the morning, in, not in the afternoon and night. We do not have it. So we have a different perspective of generations of adolescents, which is the Z generation, 
which is a very peculiar form to see then, the ones who have busy schedules and so dining uh, is a study developed uh, by Google Food uh, presented in, in, our, in our conversation. This uh, Generation Z is very connected with uh, high technology like cell phones, which has been a kind of problem to manage everything like controlling the use of cell phones here in Curitiba or in national uh, environments because sometimes they are not very proper in the context of formal teaching, right? So some financial incomes too can also impose some difficulties in the acquisition of cell phones or connecting uh, laptops, right? So what we have in terms of the population of data about Natalia Reginato School here in Curitiba is the fundamental school of basic education like the high school and we also manage the professional education with 236 students. Right, so at all we do have 316 students of high school and 350 students of basic education. Right, so we have moved a uh, kind of research with our students uh, having seen that we were invited for this presentation and the aim of it is to present the thoughts of all of them including all the changes that have been moving here at the school. So, some of the, the suggestions they had made is the end of remodeling process with the mainly infrastructure changes because this school is 62 years old, so it has been such a long time that it is um, being here in the context of this neighborhood which was considered marginalized in the context of urban planning then it was uh, a region of very poor people in Curitiba then it's a kind of love then our director is just changing the reality uh, so so positively so they want more quality in the meals which is a little bit difficult because all the food supplies are coming from a kind of policy that is intermediated by the government as well as better administrative support and laboratory spaces for steam activities, control system for permanence in the attendance of classes, which means the freedom for them to move inside and going to the toilet or, uh, for example, talking with the direction during the, the periods of classes. So it is kind of wrong. So you have cards of identification, they move themselves from here and there, and so they are controlled by monitors. So some youngsters who wear weapons, orange weapons, and so they are guided by these volunteers during the day, which is also a project here. So we do have um, a better exam evaluation process, including more activities as a suggestion, as well as a closer direction and general coordination assistant, which is quite hard in terms of possibilities because it's too much uh, to control everything like uh, remodeling and uh, such you know, uh, a legion of, of students, more than 1,000 students. So environmental positive atmosphere for learning process development is also being required here, right? So, uh, so we go ahead. Yeah, so here, here we can see the kitchen being all, uh, all changed and it's been such a long time that the students are requiring better installs for this so the movement of Panama State is moving a, a kind of action, a positive action with budget uh, support, money support for improvements in, in this school which is one of the most traditional ones here uh, in our town. Right, so here we have the, the weapons, the orange weapons that the youngsters, volunteers are wearing during the day in the counterpoint. So they do not do this, the two uh, functions together. They do these uh, like during the counterpoint positions as well as a very high project control of absenteeism, which refers to the habitual no presence of uh, an employee at the job, here we are controlling the students. So, extending 
the acceptation, the limits, like with the signs of uh, red or yellow or green, which is like the limit 90% is a good average. So this is what the director is being trying to uh, to incentivize students uh, week by week in order to increase the levels of presence uh, at school, right? So this is very positive. So another point which is very interesting is the STEAM situation. So before speaking about this, we have to say that uh, the policies concerning the nourishment or the meals of the students um, are also very important and we are reaching uh, levels of international expectations by considering the creativity of the cookers here uh, in our school as well as the sanitary measures in order to uh, have the students uh, stronger uh, for the activities during the day and it is very necessary to make use of masks and alcohol every day so we are just managing everything in order to uh, provide them a good stuff so STEAM is mainly concerned of science, technology, engineering, mathematics and art so these five groups this is an international aim throughout the world for smart schools so we are very humble and very very simple in the process but we are moving the first steps in the school in order to provide the students these kind of expectations which is very international so um, we have some experiences in science area we also have the professional education moving them along the tracks of technology and engineering we also have some exercises of math because the only course we have is business administration and we have the program uh, Mais Aprendizagem which is uh, learning more uh, moved by uh, the, the professor of arts in Portuguese uh, Wills uh, is the person who takes care of these interests and she is a remarkable personality in our school Right, because she's every every time she's creating new new uh, facades and, and just m moving the environment of the school yeah, with optimism and, and very better perspectives. So this is mainly what we have to look forward for the next millennium, like the STEAM education. STEAM education is the must for all the schools throughout the world, right? So, so here we have some very very simple experiences moving with very very simple materials too that the students are just uh, uh, moving themselves with the help of Sonia who is our uh, professor of chemistry here and they perform these experiments uh, here in the school and this is a kind of activity that is giving lots of pleasure for them all rather than writing on the board every time and speaking every time or moving just speeches uh, not uh, very very close to practical experiments and so the students are enjoying too much this uh, kind of activity right so here are some of the experiments that the students are moving and we can also see cell phones being used together which is very important right and we also have a program to take the students out uh, as soon as all the experiments considering the measures of uh, covid control could permit us to take a bus and move them to the museums as we did with the professor of math uh, andre who is one of my my uh, co-worker and then we move it here to see this great great uh, exhibition of art and it's also part of our school to move students to see outdoor activities which is part of a, a, a better project considering uh, going out of the school and uh, seeing more more interesting things out which is also being a kind of policy of many other countries throughout the world. 
as well as holistic activities in the control of uh, trees and the nature, which is very, very smart. So, right. So we have the room, which is accomplished together with the library, uh, where the professor wills uh, uh, develops uh, all the activities concerning uh, joining students for uh, practices and and enjoying the pleasure to be together and storytellers and, and the like. Right, so we also have here a sample of her art. So she's exploring Greek culture uh, and then she moves the, the panels, right, facades in the school and, and it's very, very suitable for everybody to see her work uh, every day in our lives. So, uh, we also have uh, an endeavor of Professor Hamilton. Uh, he moves on um, the experience of the um, knowledge exhibition, which is a traditional uh, event in the school schedule. And we have been working this year with Educatron, which is this kind of equipment that is also being included uh, wherever we can. Uh, and we have the chance to introduce the technology joined with the activities. And this is um, the resource room where we work with uh, special students with disabilities. And uh, sometimes it's been quite hard to have inclusion. So these difficulties are also found in many other countries, but there are people who's, who is just saying throughout the world that uh, according to many different uh, studies that students and teachers and parents lack social awareness when it comes to accepting differences which makes uh, it harder to accept children with disabilities inside and outside of school. Then this is what we have been expecting students to go on, like the crystallized intelligence, passing by to all these standards of knowledge which are conventional uh, enterprising or social or artistic activities or investments or realistic aspects of life. And then we have along the track of our life a better perspective to become an old citizen with a better education background. Here is another kind of, of activity we developed here in Natalia Reginato School which is defining the place for social studies in STEAM education, which is developing projects where students can sell whatever they want, as well as we have a kind of synergical movement forming the symbol of, uh, of uh, business administration, just to concentrate the activity and move that to a free market. So here are the awards that students could get. They designed it by themselves, like the logo mark, of, of uh, the awards, and we, we enjoy it so much. A peak because it's a symbol of prosperity, that's why uh, we have chosen this. Then here are some of the, pro of the products and services they generated along the, the project. We moved up 70 different projects, and it was a very, very well um, accepted interference, interference in the school management. And here we have what we have been facing nowadays is a kind of changing process which requires lots of attention because this is like old status school, which is 62 years old, then um, a foreign element that great resistance for changes in the school, and then a transforming idea, which is the new school uh, with another look, with another atmosphere which is the aim of our director, uh, professor, uh, Professor Stellini. Then, and then uh, the integration of, school, of all the schools and the staff again for a new status of school. So she wants to uh, make Natalia Di Gennato uh, a standard school for all the community in Curitiba. Right, then here is why we do not expect our kids to go on like Esteodoro Adorno, who is uh, a very, very well-known author throughout the world, uh, writing about the Nazism in Germany, right? And he advised us that perhaps 
the Holocaust should come for us again. Right, and then if we, we can say that the standards are the same, but the speed is like seeing this, this graceful situation, right? What he says, one needs a, a year, a lot of strength, a lot of stupidity, not to lose heart. Which is seeing not ski here. families. We not expect this. No balance. Right? So, we want students to believe that they are gardens full of butterflies. And as much flowers the gardens have, as much color they will have. So we move it this contain no violence in the schools and if you want butterflies, please do not kill the flowers. And to finish my comments and my participation in this great moment to be speaking for 100 countries. So I have to recommend my articles. So I have been developing many studies and throughout the world. I have recently been in India, New Valley, where I go in a work for the Indian society, and my name is being uh, considering like very positive in the activities for the rights of kids and good education throughout the world. So to end the presentation, I just want to present my references and. I am just providing my institutional email address for you. I am a student of Universidad de Buenos Aires and I am on the aim to get my PhD degree, which I hope I can have very soon in order to finish my career as a student. Thank you very much for your attention and believe if education matters, education is the way to change the world.